So imagine you're on the road traveling. You're tired, you just want to lay down and get some sleep. So you pull into a hotel. You go up to the desk and the clerk gets you not a private room, but a spot on a very large bed where other travelers are sleeping. Now this would have been the experience of a lot of people traveling around in the Middle Ages, and they would not have been surprised or upset by this. Indeed, this would have been normal. The idea of privacy as we think of it today, it took a long time to develop. For most of human history, people lived quite communally, and this extended, in fact, to sleeping. Think about the way human beings must have slept in our earliest communities. It must have been a tribe kind of all sleeping together as a group, and this would have been a way to keep warm and a way to keep predators away. This concept really stuck for a long time. People still tended to sleep communally in the Middle Ages. For a lot of history, your average peasant would have had a one-room cottage, and this is where the entire family would have slept together. Beds were very expensive and prized possessions. They would have been passed down through generations. The family bed would have been a place where everybody in the family slept together, and a sign of hospitality would have been allowing your guests to sleep in that bed with you. Interestingly, as you go up the social ladder, and you look at wealthier people, and some of these people could be peasants. One thing we don't understand is that there were peasants in the Middle Ages who became quite wealthy. People would have better sleeping conditions, but increased privacy wasn't really a concern. So for a more well-to-do family, you may have had one large family bed where the family was sleeping, and then kind of cots around the bed where servants would sleep. The medieval era was very much a time when the private functioned as the state. Government was centered around these family dynasties, these ruling dynasties, and the way that systems of loyalty operated, well, it involved uh, the way you lived, and this included the way you lived in private life. The people you had around you uh, at certain times, that, that had everything to do with, uh, with you know, who was loyal to you, who you showed your loyalty to, and how you function together in the society. Sleep was definitely one of these areas. So who you slept with or who you had around you as you slept, this said something about uh, who was loyal to you and who, who were your people. So let's take like a great lord, like somebody like William the Conqueror or Richard the Lionheart. When they were very young boys, they would have immediately been singled out as uh, individuals who had an important political future and thus they were going to be surrounded by other aristocratic males of their own age. This was gonna be their circle of men, men whom they could totally rely on, who would fight beside them, who would live beside them. Uh, you know, th these would be their knights. These would be the guys who would be totally loyal to them and who would be you know, there for them throughout their life. One way that this type of loyalty was expressed was that you were sleeping around your uh, lord. If we look at the earliest castles in the medieval era, they were almost just the great hall. You know, you'd have the walls and then you'd have the great hall. The great hall was the place where the lord feasted, where he conducted his, his political affairs, and also where he slept. By the time we get into the 11th century, the 12th century, castles are becoming more complicated. You still have the great hall, but then above that you have a room called the solar. This room is the bedroom of the Lord and the Lady. And it's really the only actual bedroom in the entire castle at this point. So the way this works is that the Lord and the Lady, this is a private bedroom to which they will retreat at night, but they're not necessarily sleeping alone there. They may have servants that sleep around their bed with them to attend them throughout the night. Um, this is one reason you get the development of uh, hangings around a bed. Uh, it provides some privacy for the couple sleeping there in the bed uh, if there are other people sleeping in the room around them. Meanwhile, other important individuals in the following of the great Lord, they are still going to sleep in the great hall. Uh, they will sleep on pallets. Over time, more and more of these are gonna have mattresses on them. Uh, they called them ticks in the Middle Ages. So the poorest sort of tick would have been filled with straw and uh, a little bit better one would have wool in it, and if it's really good, it's got feathers in it. So the nobility, they would have been sleeping on ticks filled with feathers. Over time in the Great Hall, they would use an increasing number of partitions at night. 
so you could kind of separate different areas of the great hall for sleeping for depending on who was there but the interesting thing about this it's not like they didn't have separate rooms because they couldn't make them i mean you know it, this could have been done it's just that it didn't occur to them to do this nobody thought that this was an important thing to do uh, if you were an unmarried knight you were going to be sleeping in the hall of of your lord it's really only by the time we get into the early modern era that you've got kind of these more elaborate setups where you've got you know the main private bedroom of the lord and then you've got a bunch of other bedrooms where important people can sleep but throughout the middle ages you can kind of see how the bedchamber is this place where matters of state can take place where uh, important things can be decided uh, in Jean of Joinville's biography of St. Louis the Ninth, he actually talks about St. Louis would uh, gather his followers around him and he would sit on the edge of his bed while everybody would sit on the floor around him. So these would be knights, these would be important people kind of sitting on the floor and he would, uh, you know, talk with them, discuss important issues with them and also just hang out with them, you know, tell jokes, tell stories. This was huge in the Middle Ages. People liked to uh to tell stories and tell riddles this was entertainment back then that's another thing that's that's interesting about the medieval era is sitting uh people didn't think much about sitting on the floor uh people would sit on stools and chairs and things like that but incidentally in the west there this was more of what you had you know stools and stuff like that it was only like in the east that you had more elaborate couches and things of this nature communal sleeping could serve a variety of important purposes. Uh, for example, protection. Um, William the Conqueror, his father died when he was a small child and he was the heir to the Duchy of Normandy. Uh, this was a perilous time for him because there were attempts made on his life, there were attempts made to kidnap him as the Norman nobility were kind of competing and struggling with one another to gain influence or gain power. There's an episode in which the child William, one of his guardians, is murdered virtually while he's sleeping beside him. Another interesting example, of course, is uh, in the late 12th century, we hear about Henry II of England getting news that his son, Prince Richard the Lionheart, had been sharing a bed with the King of France, Philip II. Henry II was alarmed by this, not because he in any way thought that there was anything sexual going on, but because he knew this was a sign that Richard was becoming closely allied with the King of France and might be uh, coming up with a plot against him. Uh, this is something that aristocrats did commonly. Uh, knights, uh, important men, would share a bed as a sign that they were forming an alliance as a sign that they trusted one another and that they were uh, going to act politically together. So over time, as we get into the modern world, this concept develops that when you go to sleep, you wanna be alone, you wanna have your own space, and indeed the whole concept of the bedroom, like this idea like a bedroom is a place where you can go, you can hang out, you can do things, you can be alone away from people. This is very much not how people thought in the Middle Ages. People didn't think that this was an important thing. It didn't even occur to them. Oh, I want to have this uh, very private space where I can go and I can live my life. Um, this just kind of shows us how differently people lived in the Middle Ages. Uh, people were not isolated. People lived in community in a way that would seem very extreme to us. But one wonders almost if this wasn't more psychologically healthy for for the human animal. Uh, we kind of evolved this way. We hear a lot about people now being isolated, feeling cut off from their fellow human beings, like they don't have any community. This really wasn't a problem people faced in the Middle Ages just because of the nature of the way they lived. When we hear about people going off and living as hermits, alone in the wilderness or something, you know, a religious aesthetic or somebody like that, this is seen as an incredibly radical uh, way to live and it's, it's a, a shocking and uh, amazing thing for medieval people, you know, that somebody would live like this. It has to be somebody very holy and kind of uh, spiritual, somebody who's very connected to God. One thing too we should remember about medieval aristocrats, they were constantly traveling. Um, I was reading a book recently about King Alfonso VII of Leon and Castile in modern day Spain. Um, his court 
was moving so much. He spent very little time in one place. And again, this was partly how a medieval king maintained his power. He went from town to town, city to city, attending to affairs and making his presence felt. And when he did this, his retinue would have gone with him. His servants, his knights, his people would have traveled around with him. As they went from place to place, they would have slept in you know, whatever castle they were staying in. Uh, you, uh, the knights, the, the servants would have slept in the great hall. Uh, and some of these places could have been very small. You know, it, it's really amazing. Uh, you can go visit some castles today, and if you can uh, visit a castle that's older, like maybe something from the 11th and 12th century, uh, a lot of people are surprised at how small these things could be. You know, the point wasn't really to have lavish comfort. The point was to have a fortified position. And, um, you know, the sleeping quarters could be pretty cramped in a lot of circumstances. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.